this diamond form. That's one atom that are all locked into place. That's really simple. A more complex structure would be like a protein. Proteins have a lot more, lots more ways of rearranging things. It also goes up with amount. So we've been doing things in terms of joules per Kelvin per mole, but there's, you don't have to do it per mole. And the more stuff you have, the, the, the more entropy there is. Heavier atoms have more entropy than light atoms because they have a lot more electrons that can move around. And vapor has higher entropy relative to solids or liquids. Oh, and lastly, liquids have more entropy relative to solids. So this is a really long list. It kind of summarizes a whole bunch of stuff we did in this chapter or the first half of this chapter. And, but if you, if you think about it, a lot of them make sense if you think about more microstates versus less microstates. Or you can use the more loose term, disorder and randomness versus more compact and ordered. But that's just a shorthand notation for more microstates versus less microstates. So they all have a reasoning behind them that we have gone through. And for me, being able to reason it out is a lot easier than memorizing a list. I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I, I, can't, I can't memorize to save my life. That's why I can't do arithmetic. I still get stuck on nine plus four. I think it's because you run out of fingers. I don't, I can't do the nine, plus nine is so hard. Okay, so wait. Oh, they're all in there. So what do we wanna do? We wanna do A, B, C, D. E. And this is a picture of C3H6. And this is C6H6. This is benzene. And this is cyclopropane. They're both rings. I love how carbon makes rings. Carbon makes rings, and carbon is a uh, the um, chemical uh, formula for diamond. So think about it. That was a joke. You don't have to laugh. That was also a joke because nobody laughed. Okay. Looks like almost everyone has answered. I'm gonna stop in five seconds. By the way, I didn't teach last year because I took what's called a sabbatical, which every, as a professor, uh, you're allowed to take either a full year at half pay or one semester at full pay to do a, an outside project. Um, but you have to say what your project is in advance and get it approved. And not all projects would be approved. So 
but I, I got a fellowship to work with the American Chemical Society Exams Institute. And one of the things that we did or that I did was um, look at complexity of multiple choice questions. And I'm gonna tell you, this one is extremely high in complexity um, because a lot of multiple choice questions that we do, you could read the question and figure out what the answer is before you even looked at A, B, C, D, or E, right? It's like the one that we did with calculate the change in moles of gas. I didn't even have to give you an A, B, C, D, and E. There was only one answer you could come up with for that question. But on this one, you can't answer the question just reading the question, which has greater entropy. You have to read five things after that to figure out which one is more or less. And I'm mixing two different substances at different temperatures and pressures and holy smokes, not to mention phases. So this one is really high in complexity which means it's less likely that people will get it right. Um, so which has greater entropy? So first of all, we know that gases have more entropy than liquids, right? That, was, that one makes it maybe a little easier to, all right, let's just eliminate the liquids because here we have it in gas form. And then the other thing was um, complex versus simple. And benzene with, with six carbons is going to have a higher complexity than cyclopropane with three carbons. So we can eliminate this one. So now it's just a fight between our two, two gases at 25 Celsius and one atmosphere and versus a half atmosphere. So which is it between B and E? High pressure would be lower volume. So it'd be compressed and low pressure would have more room to move around in. You have, are you? Yeah, I want to do the question first. You chose B, okay? No, e. e. Yeah, B and E sound just, yeah, B, C, D, and E all rhyme. So it's really hard to tell which one you're saying. Um, right, so letter E with its low pressure, which means a large volume, has more room for the uh, gas to move around in. So um, that's the right answer. I do kind of want, oh, I got a bigger bite on letter B. And nobody picked A or D. So that, that's good that those went right out. Um, somebody liked the liquid at 35 Celsius. And I admit that, that that's a little bit attractive because of the higher temperature. But the fact that it's a liquid is more important here. Um, and that, that is kind of a judgment call. So uh, I'd probably be a little careful with that on the exam, um, not, to, not to give you something that attractive and not for sure a way to eliminate it. Um, but the, right, so the answer comes out to be E because it is the complex gas at lower pressure No, I just lied to y'all. Low, 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 yeah, no, I didn't. Low pressure is a large volume. Just turn myself around. Large volume means more microstates. Okay, question to Mia. Um, yeah, I'll do Why would you not choose? Yeah. Right, so this has higher entropy, oh, higher entropy, and this one is lower, because this one is more complex, because it has, more complex has greater entropy. Yeah. 
Okay, something is in the chat. Do I want to check it? Oh, I open it. Okay. All right. So that is that's the end of entropy, which means now we move on to free energy. The last half of this chapter. Where are you, free energy? Nope. Where did it go? The iPad can be very annoying about location. PowerPoint will only open something that's directly on the iPad, even though it can see that it's in my account. Oh, sorry. On my iPad, on my iPad. Okay. Phew. Okay. Why are you being like that? Okay, people at home, you can see it? Hello? Yes, we could see it. Okay, thank you. All right, let me move this over a little bit. All right, free energy. So there's your um, the appropriate sections at the top. And so this all comes down to people being lazy. I, I fall into this category, submit it. It is tedious to calculate delta S of the universe in order to determine spontaneity, because you've got to do delta S product my reactants, you gotta do, then it's spontaneous. And this has annoyed people since the 1800s. So they invented a new quantity called Gibbs free energy G, pretty sure that's what it's called in our books. They actually recently changed the name of this to just Gibbs Energy. Don't worry about it. You can call it free if you want. I can I can go either way as long as that word Gibbs is in there. Um, so delta S of the universe is delta S minus delta H over T, or plus negative delta H over T, either way, you wanna think about it. And what we're gonna do is multiply this equation through by negative T. And what you get is this delta G is minus T times delta S of the universe 
which is delta H minus T times delta S. So all, all Gibbs did was combine H and S, multiplying S by the temperature, the absolute temperature, not Celsius, and got a new quantity um, that uh, combines the ideas about the system and the surroundings. And because it has the opposite sign of delta S of the universe, when delta G is negative, the process is spontaneous. This actually works for us in terms of thinking about an energy, because we usually think about balls rolling down a hill as being natural. So delta G is going to go to its most negative value and stop at equilibrium, just like a ball rolling down a hill. And the, the, the concept of delta S of the universe is going up to a maximum as being uh, the natural direction. It's just kind of weird. We don't think about things, oh, it's gonna rise to the top and that's where equilibrium is. We usually like to think about things rolling to the bottom. So delta G is negative and the process is spontaneous. And if you're going to remember anything from this part of the book, this equation in yellow, delta G is delta H minus temperature times delta S is the thing you should save with you. You can save this now and it will help you in organic. It will help you if you stay in chemistry, quant and physical chemistry. It definitely helps in biology and biochemistry. Um, and it's just the combination of exothermic versus changes in, in entropy. You can just focus on the system and you don't have to worry about the universe as much. So we calculate our delta G of reaction from our delta H's and our delta S's. So for this reaction, which is called the hydrogen shift reaction, it's used, um, it's used in industrial processes where carbon monoxide can be um, a byproduct. And if you combine it with steam, you can make carbon dioxide and H2 gas, and H2 gas is a fuel. So you're taking a nasty byproduct from some industrial reactions, which is carbon monoxide, which you may know is poisonous and um, convert it into something that isn't poisonous, the carbon dioxide, and something which is a fuel, so very helpful. And all you're doing is combining it with water, which is readily available. So this hydrogen shift reaction is, is really important industrially. So delta HF from, um, you can look up in these appendix Gs, but I have them written down here on the slide. And here's our uh, molar, uh, absolute entropies of those substances. You can see they're all positive. What time is it? We have three minutes of class. Ugh. Okay, so if, if I provided this to you on a test, the next step would be, what is delta H for the reaction delta H? And you can see the equation for delta G at the top. And then the last question would be, is it spontaneous? Explain. Um, right, and so for these first two, we're gonna do product minus reactant. So for the delta H of reaction, that's um, CO2 plus H2. 
minus the water and the carbon monoxide. Negative 41 kilojoules per mole. By the way, if all you ever do is watch me do these, that's not enough. Um, you got to practice them. You got to, you should practice them in class. And if you pay attention, when we get to the end of an exam period, I have given you basically a practice multiple choice and a practice workout for everything that shows up on the exam. We, we did like exam just by coming to class but that's not enough right you've got to do some of those on the goal sheet you've got to take those quizzes and use those as examples the questions to and you got a sample exam we're out of time for today so we'll pick up this question in the middle on uh monday and guess what i'm not going to do that delta s calculation we're probably going to do that as a short answer um, and I, if you're a graduating senior, please, I cannot, you must contact me so we'll talk about the final exam. And for the rest of you, don't worry about it. We'll just keep on going like we're going. I'll just be more tired and cranky as I give in the afternoon while we take classes in the morning. If you haven't picked up your exam for me, I do have them with me. Yeah, I need to post directions for what to do with it. Okay. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a thing where you do one workout and three multiple choice questions. Because okay. I didn't, I don't think I gave you answers on the multiple choice, did I? I did not. You just have, um, you know which ones are wrong. Yeah but not what the right answer is. 